um, which is kind of very similar to the previous one, but now we <coughs> sorry, we're going to focus with um, a speech instead of language and or audio. Okay, but you see that it's kind of very related to what you've seen so far. So again, thanks to the people from Talp who have helped me, helped me a lot on, on these slides. Also in this case, I've, in the last year we've been, I've been working a little bit on, on this topic, and so thanks to Jana who is here and the rest are here, but people who are, have been working on, on this during the, the last year. And also, again, I just, I, I know that most of you have no idea about speech processing at all. Um, just the basic idea is that people in speech are also using deep learning to process their data for their own problems. And there are some tools, I'm just going to point to some of them. Um, but if you want to know more and better in a good way, I suggest that you watch uh, at least these videos on speech recognition and speech synthesis. And actually in the end, like everything that we have on the, on the school on speech and language, okay? And also if you are in school, just sign up for the next edition. Okay, so uh, I'll just follow the same approach as earlier. So take back the idea of the encoder and decoder. And there's that which are in the end, there will be neural networks that we are going to train if we manage to, to have enough data and find the right loss functions and have enough GPUs and all these challenges that we face when we deal with these models. So now, um, if you want to do things on speech, I guess probably the first question is like, how can I process speech? Okay, and if you look at the, in the literature, you see that people have tried to do different things. Um, the most basic and challenging thing is just to just input the draws, draw speech into the neural network. In just the, the WAF, you just download your WAF file and fit it there as a sequence, or as however you, you want, but to be as a sequence, and try to train a network to do that, okay? If you try that, you'll see that that's super challenging because that's a huge amount of computation. So what people do, especially in the field of speech, is they, they typically just pre-process speech because they, they already know that there are some features in speech which are very, very relevant for uh, their task. So there are things like uh, computing the septstrom or NFTC coefficients, which works really well. So many of these works, first they do this pre-processing or any other, and they fit this already processed feature into the neural, neural network, okay? Uh, in case you want to do that, um, one thing uh, we that on so forth that we can uh, suggest is one of these this uh, look look at and spell uh, encoder. That's a, w a work again from Yol Vinyals and many other people. But actually, Anna was quite fighting again against it uh, during a whole semester. So we just spent a whole semester just to make this work. So which kind of tells you like how uh, how experimental and early stages we are nowadays. Okay. And then another option that we have here at UPC, we have a, a Santi Pascual has re released this second model that, that it does speech enhancement. It means like it takes input raw speech and if there is noise, it will just improve it, okay? But there's an encoder and there's a decoder there. So if you want to use it, it has TensorFlow open source. And I know that Python's version exists, but I'm not really sure if he already published it, but if you can always ask him, okay? But the TensorFlow is for sure out there. And as a decoder, typically uh, you can generate, if you are dealing with speech, you can generate raw speech, something that you can just fit into a speaker and hopefully listen to some speech. But also uh, many people, they just generate some intermediate features that also uh, are known to, to work very well to generate, to, syn to later synthesize speech, that, which makes things much easier. And uh, just here I mentioned just that Seren has the speech uh, decoder, there are other works out there, but not, not as many. Don't, don't you think there are so many? Okay. Um, now that you have some ideas or tools about how we are going to represent speech, so whether raw or with some intermediate features, okay? That's a bit confusing because I'll show you different words and each word kind of uses different approaches to encode or decode speech, okay? Just don't get lost in that. Just, if you want to work with this, just go to the paper and see exactly what they did. But assuming that somehow we have speech, uh, and we know this approach of encoder decoder. Well, nothing again. Nothing prevents us from adding as a input images and having as output speech. And let's see what happens, right? Um, so one of these uh, one work actually there are like two work from from these people. That's uh, the best results. So here they have they are, have seven videos and they generate speech. So let's try if that's convincing you know. Um, okay. So they have this input video, which is silent, okay? You see the data set, it's people with a blue background, so it's very. That was the first 
thing. No, so that's another author. I think that's the pre the previous paper they have. Okay, so that's kind of the. So that would be like kind of one of the state of the art nowadays. If you just have somebody speaking with an audio and you predict the speech of what they are saying, okay, it's kind of related to the lip reading, I guess. Actually, I think it's more challenging, but also the data. It was people with a blue background, probably a limited amount of speakers. So we are, I'm not saying here that everything is solved. I'm just saying that this is a super exciting place to be working on. Okay. So if you want to know how they made it, uh, you have the networks here. Uh, I think you should kind of have an idea of how, how, what they did. So there, if there are frames, there are video frames. They, it means that they had a CNN there that encoded the image, and they trained that, and they trained in such a way. So as you have videos, remember, uh, Victor uh, lecture, the first thing he said is like, hey, there's video, and what is nice from video is that you can define so many self-supervised tasks, okay? And that's, that's one of the things. So you have just people speaking that you have perfect. You have the frames, and you have the, the audio, and that's perfectly synchronized. So just go and try to predict, train a network that given a frame will generate some speech, okay? That's the basic thing you can do. And that's what they did. Again, they didn't uh, generate, they don't generate directly the raw speech, they generate some descriptors that are popular in the community, and which allows them to, in the end, to generate the, the speech. And that's, okay, that's the full architecture. Just to notice that they have, uh, so they detect the face, and they use uh, uh, temporal information. So actually, I think, I think to remember the first version the, uh, was not considering temporal information. Now they, they encode tem temporal information with optical flow, which was one of the ways that Victor showed you you could, you could do it. Okay, you just feed that, so you have some idea of, of the motion, and in the end you can generate the, you can coordinate the embeddings, that was one of the options that he was mentioning earlier, and you have a fully connected layers that will predict this descriptor. Yeah? Um, what about the other way around? What if we have speech and what we want to do is to generate visual information? Can we do that? So I guess that you should, now you should have an idea of that yes, we can do it, if, as long as we have speech encoders and we have that, there's no problem in doing that, and we can train that for our data. So that's uh, uh, one work that people love, and which is very exciting, actually. It was, so they, they have um, these data faces, so they, have, uh, they built a large data set of uh, videos, and they detected the faces, and then they extract uh, some audio features, which I don't really remember which ones they, they were, and they, uh, these audio features, in the end, they were represented as to the image heat map. So they feed that into the convolution neural network, the audio features. That's the one you have here on, on top. Uh, they also fed one image, only one single image of, of the person that they want to synthesize. Okay, but th there's one image, one identity face. And based on that, they just infer, so they can coordinate the features, and they just infer uh, for each mm, with, uh, audio frame it means a, a temporal window of audio. For each of them, it generates one video frame. So this is its image, but actually it's like a frame. So you're going to have for each, each portion of audio, you have one frame here. And that at the end, you'll have a sequence of faces, right? You have a sequence of with, uh, audio windows. Each of them has a video frame. You have a sequence of, of faces. Clear? You want to see how it works? Okay, so let's see if that's convincing enough. I guess you get the idea, right? Okay, so you have some English humor there. You can watch the end at, at you know how it ends, right? So you can watch it at home. Uh, so that's from Oxford, this work. And here, UPC are working on this. So maybe you've seen Fran working 
while you were in the project here coding like crazy because he has a deadline because he wants to finish this. And actually he's trying to do, later I was, paying, uh, was focusing like, it's different to generate uh, new images than f to just infer them. So these guys, they are just inferring. So whenever they have whatever window, uh, audio window there, they will just generate that face, always the same one, okay? And then what uh, Fran is trying, fighting uh, against is to, uh, to have some gener generative models, so given one portion of speech to train a, a GAN, remember uh, Kevin's uh, lecture, that will generate uh, a face, but it would might generate one or different faces, okay? So he's trying to, to, to be able to generate more than one face. And also the other challenge is that he's not using any audio features, he's just uh, feeding that directly with raw audio, okay? So if you wanna see how it works, you tell me if he should submit the paper or, or not. So that's what he has now. Um, um, these are, so I think that this supposed to be a famous person that I don't know, but I guess some of you know him. Does anybody know this guy? Nobody? Okay, I, I, I was suspecting that. Okay, anyway, it's a YouTuber, whoever that guy is, okay? And uh, so the trick here, here, so we, we, the network's trained with images from this YouTuber, okay? So it's not, it's not that, that we are feeding speech of somebody the network has never seen. And here, uh, you see what he gets. So actually, he, he tried two things. He just, on the right, you see one that kind of Im images. So you see that there are different faces. And okay, they're not super different, but they are slightly different. So it means it's a generative model. So for each utterance, utterance means like a, a temporal window of audio. So he generates slightly different faces. And uh, he tried with just the speech and also, that would be this, the examples, with also a speech and a vector with the ID. So say, okay, it's, if there are, in the data there are like think, 10 YouTubers, so it, this YouTuber number three or four or whatever, okay? And that's what he's experimenting, okay? So if you see him, just tell him that you see this. Okay, another way you can do that, uh, much simpler, so just, uh, just it's important where I wrote his row to row. So we are going from row audio, row of, to row pixels, face pixels. So it's, it's a face, it's, we, we run a face detector there. Okay, but it's pixel, we just generate the pixels. Because now I'll show you some words which are great, they look great. That's this one, maybe you've seen it because it was in the in a media, but they are not generating directly the pixels. They are generating some uh, parameters of a, of a model in which you will synthesize in the end the, the face. So the quality is very good, but actually you're not generating the pixels, you're generating the parameters of a model, okay? So in this work, um, they uh, feed their the speech, whatever, and what, what they do here is the, the trick here is that they are predicting the points, the shape of the lips, okay? And they, so that, that's what the network is predicting. And once you have the, the lips, I think they, modi they crop the lip area and they just generate Synthetically, the, the lips that match whatever points were predicted. Yeah? So let's see. So. Even just how your last input. It's been less than a week since the deadliest mass shooting in American history. Our method produces the following output. It's been less than a week since the deadliest mass shooting in American history. And foremost in all of our minds has been the loss and the grief. Here's the grand truth video of Obama saying the same words. Especially our friends who are lesbian, gay, bisexual, or transgender. I visited with the families of many of the victims on Thursday, and one thing I told them is that. Yeah, so what you see on the right, it's, it's synthetic, okay? So Obama never said that in this context. The investigation is ongoing. We know that the killer was. You can watch the, there are eight minutes, eight minutes of video, so you can watch them at home, but uh, just notice that it's quite realistic, right? Probably a human will not notice that that's really fake uh, video. So be careful when you watch videos of people saying stuff, okay? Um, if that was, yes, we can discuss about it later, yeah. <laughs> but it's there, um, so use it responsibly, okay, guys? Um, so there's this other work um, which is supposed to be better. So here they, they don't just generate the lead, but they also generate the, the whole vertex of the, of the face, okay? So they are predicting more points, but still they are generating the vertex positions, not the, not, not pixels, yeah, let's say like this. 
I think you'll see like different. This is cooling a temperature zone in So you just saw the one in the middle, and that's a new one. That they claim that is better, okay? But actually, they, they claim they are building the 3D model, so you can do. You can put any identity there, right? With the 3D model, Edu will tell you, but I think you can put any identity there. watch it yeah. at home, the show it to your friends, they'll be very impressed, they'll be concerned about what they're going to watch on TV or Twitter or whatever from now on. Um, here at UBC, we're, our, we have this project called Speech to Sign. We don't have any results yet, but uh, we are trying to go from speech to sign language. So maybe it's, uh, we are trying to improve accessibility to everybody, especially people with hearing impairments. And that, if you are here, especially next semester, and you work on the course, if you want to work on this, just let us know, okay? Um, then there are some other applications that they, it's not that they go from one modality to another, but they are kind of combine them, just giving you some ideas that how to combine stuff. Some of them related to what Eva just explained for audio. Um, so this work, again, from this lab from Antonio Torraba from in, in MIT, um, what they did is they, um, so they took a, lar a large data set of images, this data set called places, which is like an image net, uh, so imagine there are objects, in places there are like scenes of places, okay, that's, that's, that's a name of the data set. So they took this and then they show it to people and people just describe the image. And they recorded how they describe it, <coughs> yeah? But no, no transcription, there's no, no text at all. Yeah, just, just somebody saying, yeah, go wrong. There's no example or whatever. There's a countryside here with some yellow flowers and there's a blue sky, blah, blah. They did that, did that for uh, 120, thousand times, so they created a, a large data set. And then they, then they had, for each image, they had a huge amount of uh, transcriptions, so that, that would be like the whole speech signal. They took a window, uh, so they, they took uh, wi windows of, oh, sorry, convolutions and windows of here, and in the end, they tried to uh, learn projections, so they are kind of trying to learn um, a network, so these two networks, where the image, oh, should they learn this linear projector, and this uh, commercial uh, neural network on speech, on the 2D representation of speech. Once you have these two final representations and you do the dot product, they should be uh, sim similar if they are matching. It's very similar to what Eva has explained earlier with uh, when you have audio and video and, you, and you, they are already paired, so you just try to, to make them uh, similar in terms of, of, cos of cosine similarity, right? So you train that. And then uh, at test time, what they do is they, again, they show this image. And he, here you have the speech. And then uh, on those portions of speech where there's some, um, some word, some phonemes, some row voice, that is very representative from the, the type of images that are similar to this one, then the sim that is the sim this is the similarity score across time, right? So you see that the similarity score, so here there's a, a uh, large full of grassy. So when there's grassy, which probably it's the, the, the term, the word that it's, it's quite descriptive of this uh, image, right? So the symmetry score just increased, right? Grassy field, so when it says field, there's also an increase of the symmetry score. That's what can kind of what they observe. They managed to, to train a network that somehow, roughly, okay, it's recognized recognizing which, which parts of the speech they have more representative uh, content associated to this type of images. That's what they learn. Okay? Once they had that, they take one step further. Uh, again, now I want to, I always highlight that, but that's important that we have students from UPC there. So these two are former students. They just submitted this. So they took one step further. And if they did that for the whole image in the previous world, now they are just going to localize. And again, like similar to what I've explained on localizing sounds and, and all that, uh, now they uh, localize the portion of speech that refers to some regions in the image. Yeah, so now uh, expect in the next image, you will see uh, not, not just a similarity score, but you will, so, you will see a heat map of 
of the, the parts that are uh, that were more activated when you, you feed the whatever speech in there. So here, this is some examples of uh, one of when the speech uh, contained the word woman. Okay, but again, there's no text ever, ever, ever. So everything is full speech. Um, so when the when the contains the word woman, uh, they observe that the local activations they actually kind of localize uh, the object, roughly. Okay. Yeah. So that's another way for annotating and collecting data. Maybe that's that's enough. Now you, some of you have spent many hours annotating data, probably this this last week. So just there are tricks that might might be, might be enough. Okay. In some cases. Good. Uh, another work that it's also trying to match speech with not not regions, well, to objects. So we could say that here we are we are matching speech to objects in the in the with a heat map. You can also match speech to objects, but uh, identifying, let's say, two faces, right? So here the idea is that uh, they train uh, neural networks. These are like different configurations they they try, but the basic idea is that uh, the basic problem they want to face is. If I give you two images of two people and I give you a speech signal, just tell me which of the, uh, which of the two images corresponds to the speech signal. That's what they train for, okay? And they try with different stuff, with optical floor or whatever, with different uh, ways of classifier. But that's that's the the basic idea. I think there's an example here you might want to watch. Was a, an easy case. Yeah, okay. I think it's quite clear what they are trying to do. Good. Um, then, uh, especially from the speech community, they 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 are struggling into trying to solve classic um, problems from speech, but taking into consideration uh, the visual information, because that's what we have in videos, right? In videos, you have the audio uh, part and the, and the visual part. So maybe some of them that can be solved more easily. So one of, of them that have been like two recent works, it's called speech uh, separation, which is also uh, the idea here. It's quite a, quite a complex uh, network, but probably it's, we have enough with the, with the output. So we have. Um, a speaker video, so means there's a video with uh, somebody speaking, and then you have the, the sorry, that's the, it's cleaning the audio. Uh, I'm not fully sure that this paragraph, okay, I should just show the video. So what the, what they are doing is they are um, um, trying to kind of the, this matching, but in this case, they just look at the lips. So basically, they, they detect the lips. So sorry, the problem of, of speech. So there are like two people speaking at the same time. And they kind of manage to uh, distinguish between them, um, actually by uh, looking at the, basically at the lips that's very correlated to the speech. So that allows to select one of each of the speakers. So you see that it works pretty well, right? That's that's a classic problem in, in speech. Okay, whatever. Then uh, there's another word that kind of uh, solves the, the similar problem uh, from Google. And the previous one was from Oxford, I think. Yeah, uh, Oxford maybe did Google did mine, and then this one is from Google, uh, Google Research. Um, so again, in this case, they have. Uh, the, they detect the faces, they feed them into a CNN, which is shared weights, and then they, co they concatenate that with the, with the audio, and that allows them to uh, split in the end. They, they learn to, to split the, the different speech. But again, they don't do it end-to-end, uh, -end, but 
they, they generate the spectrograms. Then finally, uh, just to finish, uh, one the maybe one of the most classic problems in speech is the problem of speech recognition. It has also been shown uh, with the recent work from uh, the people from uh, Carnegie Mellon, actually, um, that that it's true that uh, let's see what is it. So you have here you have the audio features that get in here, but also you also uh, concatenate at visual features, and then you try to, to train a network for speech recognition. And people who are doing speech recognition, they, they basically they have like two basic models. One of them, architectures, one of them is based on these CTC laws. That's what they, they try this with this CTC laws architecture for speech recognition. And they, have, uh, they also have models that follow this uh, sec to sec uh, architecture, which I'm not fully really sure if you've seen uh, in this course, but it's a very popular architecture, let's say, for uh, sequence uh, processing where they have uh, the audio and they also have the visual features. And in the, in, you look at the paper, you see that when they introduce uh, visual information for speech recognition, that, that helps. They improve speech recognition uh, as well, right? So if you have video and you want to solve one of these problems, our advice is that you try to use everything you have. Even if you want to do speech, you can look at, at the image as well. And that's, that's it for this series of two lectures. Uh, so you've seen how well, it is like audio, text, uh, vision, and speech. I know that speech and audio are kind of the same. They are kind of, uh, now they are addressed all together with one magic uh, ring that uh, rules them all. But actually, like this ring, it's a uh, perceptrons and these neural networks. Um, I think that it's a very exciting moment now because we have this, this community, uh, these three communities who are using the same tools. And by interacting one with, with, with others, you can have like brand new applications that, that seem very interesting and exciting. Okay, so that will be it for this part. Is there any